Good evening, everybody. Hello. Just going to move that so that you can see. Welcome. We are kicking off our intermediate series tonight with a cardstock split tumbler, which is basically a three-way split tumbler, two splits on the front, one whole piece of the back, but we're gonna be using cardstock. Now, I thought that this would be a good way to kick off our intermediate series, simply because I can do the whole design of the cup up to the first coat of epoxy in one single live. Where is my face? Um, the webcam that I wanted to use was delaying video to audio, like the audio was half a second in front of the um, video. So I've messed up my link settings somehow. So I'm going to figure that out for when we um, go live with part two in two weeks time. But my face is coming. Um, it's been a while since I've done the two camera thing and I don't know what's happened to my face cam. But we've got a project cam and it didn't freeze on me, so we're going well. Um, if you have not yet caught the beginner series or if you are new to the group and you'd like to check it out, we did do a five part beginner series um, just before Christmas we started and we finished at the end of February. If you search the group for the tutorials topic, um, every tutorial that has ever been done, um, including Anna's tutorials when the group was first made is all under that tutorial topics tab okay but we are doing a cardstock tumbler tonight and we are working on a 20 ounce skinny now my favorite sizes to do this design is either a 20 ounce skinny or a 20 ounce standard right the one that doesn't taper hi Shailene is it Shailene if it's not, can you spell it out phonetically for me in the comments so that I don't get your name wrong, please? Because I think it's important to get it right. So I'm going to go with Shailene for now, and if that's not right, please let me know. Okay, so we are working on a 20 ounce skinny tonight. I have already gone ahead and prepped my cup, and as always, when I say I prep my cup, I sand my cups. I give them a really good wash, I let them dry, and then I spray paint. I have used Australian Exports Matte White. Um, if you were doing a darker based uh, cardstock, you could use whatever colour that your glitter or your mica powders or whatever you wanted to use. Um, you can use the same base colour. I just did it white because a lot of newbies or in, like by the time you get to intermediate, um, you should have white and black spray paint. So we're going with white. Uh, now the cardstock that I've chosen tonight I got from a local supplier of mine. Uh, her company is called Alice in Paperland. And there you can see their wattle. I did go looking for sunflowers, couldn't find sunflowers, so we're going with wattle, which works well because this is Aussie tumbler makers and crafters. We are now also and crafters, right? So that the cardstock sits on the first half of the cup. Going underneath, I'm going to use Anna's uh, Aussie Gold Mica Powder um, from Kiss My Art by Anna. If you have a look, this is why I'm using it. Do you see that? That is a pigment powder, but it is a larger cut, so it's not so finely ground. It looks like glitter. So we're using that, and then the whole back side of the cup, which is where I usually add the customization, we are using Danny from DJ Designs, her Galaxy Star. Okay, so it's a very gold cup this evening. Uh, hello, Amanda. Hi, Danny. Hello, Emma. And we have Yvonne, and we have Liv. Everybody's here. Is it Charlene? Press one for Shailene, press two for Charlene, and then if I'm still not right, I'm, <laughs> I'm really sorry, I'm trying here. Okay, <clears throat> so once you have prepped your cup, the idea is that we want to split the cup in half, and then on one side, we're gonna split in a diagonal, okay? So the first thing that we want to do, hi Valerie is, I can see you all now that my comments are scrolling, I will to begin with. Okay, I'm going to get my tape measure. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is mark No, it's going to come 
this way. Mark half and half, okay? So I now know if I wrap that around. That's about an even slip. Let's get Crystal in here. Crystal lives near me, guys. Um, we actually met in another cup group when Port Macquarie and all of the mid-north coast all the way down. Basically when all the big bushfires were happening all up and down the east coast of Australia. That's how I met Crystal. <clears throat> okay. So once you figure out the top of your... Maybe I should take this out for now. Once you figure out splitting the top of your cup in half and this is why if you're doing this for the first time probably use a skinny because it is going to be the same size the whole way around um, with tapered cups you have to be a little bit more conscious of making sure that your line goes straight the whole way around right but once you've got it marked bearing in mind that obviously when you tape it off if I'm taping off see my little line if I'm taping off here it means that I want to be working on this side of the cup okay because the tape lines up with that line and all this back part sorry keeping in frame all this back part doesn't matter that it's covered because we're going to be working on that later so make sure that the um is it going to be the right way around yes it is the right side of your tape lines up with the line that you've made for yourself for marking am i making sense so far Yes, Liv's moving to where I am as well, guys. She's currently, how far away do you reckon you are? Five hours? Six hours? But she's learning how impossible the rental market is here at the moment. I'll tell you what, I don't envy her. Okay, so this is what we're going to do the front side of the cup for. Okay, so all this back bit back here will be the glitter. I'm gonna go straight down the middle of the cup. Make sure it's all face down. And straight up the other side. And as you can see, what can you see? No, you can't see. How am I gonna get it to come up? See this tiny little mark here? Right, my tape comes right up and over that. And you've split your cup in two. Okay. Now, because I'm using, and I should mention this, if you want perfect 50-50, um, you're going to have to put cling wrap down over the half that you um, want covered and then tape it off that way. Doing it this way, obviously the middle of the cup where I've lined up the tape is here. But technically speaking, now that we've put the tape on and split it into two, technically speaking, halfway through the cup is now here, right? For a perfect split. Now, because the front I usually leave as cardstock and glitter or cardstock and mica powder or whatever, right? I don't usually mind that the back part where is um, a little bit thicker than the front because the back part is usually where I put um, their name or a vi uh, vinyl SVG that I've done up or whatever they want their design to be with vinyl goes on the back. So I don't actually mind it being a little bit thicker. Um, but if you are really anal and you have to have that exact split, what you do is you wrap your half of a cup in, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Cling wrap. You wrap your half of the cup in cling wrap and then you make, you still tape down where the line is. And that way you'll have, does that make sense? If I'm not making sense with my explanations, please let me know. <laughs> okay, so... Now I have to remember which side the line was on. Okay. So we're working on this part. Now I want my cardstock to 
become I'm gonna move you up because I'm having trouble fitting the cup in the frame tonight I want my cardstock to come down to about here then come down at an angle and then finish off right so I've got like a triangle with a flat edge a flat corner instead of a corner for my mica powder so maybe about here is seven inches and then if I want it to come up five and a half inches remember that seven and five and a half Where we get our cardstock, and I'm left-handed, so I am going to do it upside down, and also so that I'm not reaching over. Okay, and I couldn't find a ruler, so I'm using my clay, my clay cutter. Um, but we want to come down. line up with where we put our seven to you Anna but um, I don't want to go giving out locations I'm not sure what everybody's like with privacy so I'm trying to be discreet <laughs> going with this. Yes, Wish we could see the concentrate. Man, it's... I do have to concentrate. I'm not good. A, I'm not good with numbers. Um, I get my numbers mixed up a lot. But B, um, my eyesight's crap. Like, even with glasses on under this fluorescent light, I have a lot of trouble seeing blacks. And the numbers on the measuring tape against the contrasted background is not easy to read. Okay, so we're going to start with Mod Podge tonight. Now, you can use Mod Podge for the entire cup. Uh, I'm impatient and I want my stuff to dry in the live. So for um, the mica powder bit only, I'm going to use Tacket. Um, but for the rest, we are going to use Mod Podge. But it really depends on what medium, what look you're going for. I mean, if you want to do the whole back, if you're doing cardstock mica glitter and you want the whole back section to be the tacket method with a holographic glitter, that's fine too. It's your cup. You can do whatever the, whatever you like. Uh, you know what I didn't do? Now that I've gone and dumped that in there, is taped off. Yeah, 
gerne få det med mig magt her til gang. And if you were doing it all with Mod Podge, you wouldn't need to um, tape your side stripe. We're going to call it a side stripe. Um, but because I want to use Tuck It, I'm going to. Because I'm not neat when it comes to Mod Podge. I don't think. I will ever be a neat and tidy crafter, to be honest. Okay, that's done. <coughs> Excuse me. Have my little side tongue hanging out. No, but um, if you ever wonder why I've got really bad frown lines between my eyebrows, that's why. Because I'm going blind and I've got to look. Scrunch me brow, because apparently scrunching your brow improves your eyesight. I'm using a foam brush, but because it's being covered in cardstock, as long as it doesn't really matter about brush strokes, um, as long as you've got no big clumpy bits or big lumpy bits, not on your cup anyway. I have a lot of clumpy and lumpy bits, just not on my cup. guys can see as well what well, I've got it upside down we're off to a good start okay so I'm gonna line it all up Push it down and pray to the gods that it lines up and it doesn't. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so I'm just pushing and smushing all the way around and then I'll show you my boo boo. Anybody watch the Tiger King? I didn't personally. Um, but I did see all of the memes that were going around. The one that said it ain't that straight, right? <laughs> That's me cutting a straight line ever. Look. <laughs> so obviously, <laughs> that's supposed to go up. But um, I'm not too worried because A, it's only like literally a smidge, right? But B, when I come along and put my vinyl lines down anyway, I'll just put thicker lines on the cup. And that will hide the fact that I didn't cut it quite straight. Rebecca, yes, uh, it'll be saved in the group as well. Mel! Guys, Mel's my best friend in the whole world. She's been putting up with my ass for almost two decades. But funny you say that because this is your cup. You chose... Australian flora and fauna. So, this is your cup. Okay, now I'm just going over the cardstock now with more Mod Podge just to seal it in. Now, depending on how thin, I'm going to push that down. I think the Mod Podge dried underneath it a bit too quick, but we can fix that. Uh, depending on how thin your cardstock is, Please, if you're going to rub the Mod Podge in like you would with a fabric cup, um, don't rub too hard because you can end up, um, what's the word? Um, like where you make the paper come up in little balls. Can somebody help me out with my turn? Is it pilling? Pilling? No, that can't be right. That doesn't sound right. Yeah, poor Mel, man. She's seen it all. She still loves me. Okay, so I'm just pushing along the edges to try and get those edges to really stick. 
and now I'm just very gently I'm not applying too much pressure running my finger over the Mod Podge right just trying to get any little wrinkles or bubbles that may still be under it but also working that Mod Podge into the cardstock right as soon as it's not slippery anymore and it dries out don't play with it okay we're just gonna let that dry and then come back and put another coat now when I'm doing cardstock cups I will do at least right so it's got one coat on it now I'll do at least another two before I put my first coat of epoxy on because I do not want any um, wet spots or oil spots forming in my cardstock design so it's a bit like a fabric tumbler, but you don't have to put as many layers. Um, I usually do six or seven layers for a fabric cup. Pilling! That's, is it pill? Yeah, that's the, it didn't sound right. But yeah, when you get, that's glue. But like the little balls that rub off. So just be really careful. Okay, so while this is drying, I'm now going to wipe that mud podger. I'm now going to go ahead and peel my side stripe off I'm just gonna get a little alcohol wipe because we've got a little bit even if I even though I taped off we still have a little bit of mud podge okay So we're moving on to whoop, the tacket. Now my tacket, um, where's my bottle? When I say tacket, I mean Aileen's tacket over and over, which is what Anna and Danny um, are talking about in the comments right now. Um, but I make mine up at a 50-50 ratio. Um, I've tried it straight, and for the tacket method especially, I didn't have much luck. And I've also tried it at a two parts water to one part tacket ratio, um, and that didn't work for, uh, no, sorry, two parts tacket to one part water. But as soon as I started doing it one to one, um, I started having a lot more success. So I pre-make mine up in a little container. Uh, can somebody, oh uh, yeah, I'll do it. Uh, no, she's talking to you, Anna. She hasn't heard a damn word that we've said. That's okay, I'll message her later. Um, yeah, so I keep mine in a little container and I just mix it up as I go. So I'm going to paint it on here with a little paintbrush. And then we're going to hit it with a heat gun to make it dry. Like I said before, this doesn't have to be mica powder um, or pigment powder or anything. I mean, you could use um, any kind of pigment powder. You can use acrylic paints. You can use glitter. Um, what else is there to use? <laughs> You can use more cardstock. That's one thing I have not done, is use two lots of cardstock on a cup like this. But I have used just about everything else. Um, I just like using Tacket for mica powders, especially when I'm applying like this, because once Tacket is dry, I can just get my old swooshy brush and apply it that way and rub it off. Um, heat gun. I'm just gonna do this over here so it's not in your ear because the microphone's there.
done. I don't know why. I have been doing that since these came in. Um, I'll put them down to stand and then I'll still hold it with it attached. Um, I don't know guys, I'm not normal, but we knew that already. So if you see me holding it with the stand, <laughs> that's why it's just habit. Don't want to push the tape down too much because the Mod Podge is still a little bit wet. But I do want to protect it from overspill. I'm also going to get a different brush. Here we go, we'll try this one. you'll see it all flying around on the camera this one's big enough to actually pick up anybody have any questions while I'm smushing away what tape is that please it is just the scotch blue tape from Bunnings um, does it tell me? It's number 2090. I think from memory it's 20, 25 mil. Um, but I just buy, I buy it in that size and then I buy it in the really, like the one that's double the thickness as well. Um, the double the thickness one is what I use for like plate cups and stuff. But I don't have any of that left. So we're going on with its little brother tonight. Okay, I'm going to have to do it off camera, sorry guys, because doing it at that angle, it's just falling off. Just going to do my butt. I just realised if Mel's got her um, phone muted, she doesn't even know that this cup is for her. I'm not going to tell her, are you? method with glitter. I'm just going to rub away any excess and then I'll decide if it needs a second coat. I don't know, I kind of like the patchy look. It kind of goes with the rustic. What do you reckon? I'm going to have to come back and put more Mod Podge on the cardstock tomorrow before I can epoxy anyway. So I will decide on a second coat tomorrow. But what are you putting the cup on at the moment? Diane, never a pain. Um, there's never any stupid questions. That's why we're here. Okay. These came from uh, DJ and Raw. They're just little... If I can get it off. Nope. Okay. They're just little stands. Um, anybody that's been watching me for a while knows that I'm all elbows when I do my crafting and I was knocking over so many cups in the beginning. So that just kind of helps me um, not knock my shit over while I'm live. And 
the day after I bought these Chelsea Blue Designs released her version as well. So one, you can set your, um, what do we call these guys? Help me out here tonight. Arms. You can set your arm in here or you can set your arm over the top. Okay, it really is preference. I have both. Um, because I'm lucky. Uh, no, um, Deanna sent me her one, the purple one that I just showed you, uh, when I bought more tourniquets off her recently, um, and I ordered these. Sorry, the gold stuff. This is, yes, sorry, um, it has her old label on it, but this is the, can I get to show up, the Aussie gold from Kiss My Art by Anna. Anna is around, if she can please tag her page. Um, but they come in massive 50 gram jars. And it's not so, did you see it at the beginning? It's not so finely ground like a normal pigment. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so. If I gently peel that away, there's our front. Okay. Now, I just took the tape off the bottom, the paint not to take the paint so hopefully the glitter covers that look ah! but now that we've done the front we're gonna do the back and we are using um, I'm not a gold person I think no offense to anybody that does I'm a silver person gold looks horrible on me and because it looks horrible on me I think it's horrible it's self me and gold just don't get along but, as far as gold glitters go, this is one of my all-time favourites. And I have been using it on everything lately. Uh, you put it on a white base, and it's gorgeous. Uh, I've done it on a dark, like a really dark forest green base. It was gorgeous. Um, I've done it on a gold base. It was gorgeous. <laughs> and, that's it. So it's not a proper gold glitter, it is a mix and it does have an opal vibe to it, but it is. Sorry, I'm anal about my shakers and the way that the lids go on and everything has to... <laughs> Speaking of being cut off about my glitter, everything that falls off goes back into my shakers always now this part I am going to go back to my Mod Podge I didn't tape up again Hopefully that's dry enough. But time will tell. But yes, if you're doing this all in one setting, sitting, sorry, um, and you're not patient, um, usually I do the cardstock, put a top layer on, leave it an hour or a day or however long I wanted to leave it. Came back, did the bottom part, same deal, let it dry, came back, did the back part. Because I'm trying to squeeze it all into one live, um, I'm not sure if you can see, but we've got a little bit of mica powder overflow because it was still a little bit wet. Um, if you're doing it all in one sitting like I am doing tonight, remember to tape off to cover the parts that you don't want the overflow going onto. I am hoping that the Mod Podge on the cardstock especially. Is um, dry enough. Do 
forget the bottom. And I never do. It's only ever on a live that um, I was forgetting to do them. So you'll hear me in every video say, don't forget your butt. That's me reminding myself to not forget to do the bottom. It's like a force of habit to remind myself out loud now, and I don't know why. I have no explanation for you guys. I'm sorry. I want to, I want that card stock. You're gonna have to get me some. She has a website, Anna. Um, <clears throat> the card stock. Just quickly before we start playing with glitter, because it might give the Mod Podge a chance to dry too. Right, this is the side that we're using. That's the other side, which I think is just as pretty. What? We've lost my camera. Hang on. See? It just wants you to have a look at the... Um, the paper a little bit longer. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. Okay, we're back. Right? That's really pretty as well. Um, but I wanted light, bright, happy, not dark. Okay? But it is... Paper Rose is the brand, and it is called Natural Stroll Dash B. Okay, but she does have a website. Um, I'm not sure if she posts. I do know that she has a website, and all of her stock is on the website. Um, she used to be based in Sydney, so I dare say she does post because she did have quite a following down there before she moved. Um, that's what it's called. If you want to have a look. Um, obviously I've never ordered off her because I like going down there and seeing it in person and talking shit to her for half an hour. <laughs> See, isn't that pretty? Sorry to anybody for the tap 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 tapping noise if that's getting to you. Um, I actually have a friend who refuses to watch my lives in my personal Facebook group, like for my customers, because uh, she can't stand that tap 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 of the shaker. So now I'm always really conscious when I do it. Oh, I need scissors just to do that. See, I almost forgot to do the bottom again. This is why I have to remind myself out loud, otherwise I do forget. Okay. So, I'm going to go through, because it is a chunky mix, and just pat it down. And then, I'll show you what the whole thing looks like. Now, from here... Um, especially because it is a chunky glitter. Um, once it's all dry and I come back to do my Mod Podge tomorrow, um, I will Mod Podge the whole cup just to seal it all in. And then from there, I apply all of my layers of Mod Podge to my cardstock and when that is fully dry, um, just for good measure because I don't want any of my glitter going into my cardstock and I don't want any of my mica powder floating around or anything. So Mod Podge the whole cup tomorrow. Once that's dry, I'm going to Mod Podge this cardstock one or two more times. It depends on how thick. Um, I apply it but I usually wait and um, I know that I'm done with the cardstock when you hold it up to the light and you do that and it's glossy um, but dry I know that I've got enough coats and it's sealed in and then just for good measure I'll go outside and I'll spray seal the whole cup before I epoxy as well um, yeah 
actually can't tell that that's not straight but you will be able to tell when the vinyl lines go on so I'll have to be wary of that because nothing ticks me off more than seeing lines that aren't straight on a cup that's supposed to have straight lines it makes me twitch but hang on I'm just gonna do this in a way where I'm not gonna waste any more of that So this is all you guys are going to see in this live video um, and then if you want to catch the rest basically I'm going to go through the steps with you now and then I'm going to film the rest and put it on my YouTube channel so from here as I mentioned I'm going to do two more coats of Mod Podge on the cardstock I'm going to Mod Podge the whole cup then I'm going to do another one or two coats on the cardstock when that is completely dry I'm going to spray seal it and then the next part of the video you will see me doing the epoxy and I'm going to put a coat of epoxy on make sure that it's all smooth that is when I'll go and add the name on this side and all of my lines okay I think I'm going to do thick white lines with the new tech wrap did everybody see my video on the tech wrap box I got today hang on I'm going to use this one Okay, so I'm going to put white lines on it and then the gold stripes over the top of it. That will all be on film as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And once all that's done, it will be ready for its final coat or five. Um, everybody knows once you've been doing cups for a while, final coats are never final coats. If you're lucky, your final coat will be a final coat. Spray Seal Diane is a clear acrylic spray paint. Uh, I prefer to use the Rust-Oleum two times in the satin or the gloss. If I can't get that, I use the White Knight one that's got, uh, it's like a white can with green labelling. Not the Squirts one. Uh, there is a White Knight Squirts Clear. That's horrible. You want just the standard White Knight Clear Acrylic Paint. Um, <clears throat> they're the two that I've used that I've found no problems with. I have used the squirts one before it's shocking uh, I've also used the Australian export in the clear but I found that when especially on water slides went really yellow really quickly but it goes yellow under the epoxy that looks horrible so instead of the epoxy yellowing with it it was like a really nasty like tobacco stain color all the way around the clear water slide it was gross so I avoid that now too um, but basically coating cups especially when you're using like different colors of glitter and you don't want them to mix that is a really good way to seal it all in so that when you go to put the epoxy on your glitter isn't going to be moving around the cup um but yeah so i'll put the vinyl on i'll put her name on i'll put the stripes on i'll put the final coat of epoxy on and once all of that is filmed i will upload this video onto youtube um just so you can save it to your playlist to watch it whenever you need Otherwise, <clears throat> this live will be saved. I always save my lives for those that couldn't catch the live. Please hashtag replay. Otherwise, that is our split card tumbler. Surprise, guys! I filmed this section and my microphone was muted, so I am seeing this as an opportunity to work on my voiceovers. This is basically just me explaining that I'm about to put the first coat of epoxy on the tumbler that you just saw us make in the first part. Now, at the moment, I am using Diamond Coat from Just Resin. I have mixed in this section, I've mixed up a 20ml mixture. So that is 10ml of part A and 10ml of part B. Diamond Coat is a one-to-one -one limited food safe 
uh, resin and it's one that I've been using for a couple of months now and I really enjoy using it. Now as always when using resin long term or for long periods at a time please make sure you protect yourself by using the proper uh, protection. Uh, this includes wearing eye goggles if you can, wearing gloves and wearing a half face respirator mask that has interchangeable filters. I use the 3M one from Bunnings that is yellow and green. So we're just going to continue to speed this up and then once this is finished we will move on to the next section. So here is our cup. It has had a uh, coat of epoxy put on it. Um, then when the coat of epoxy was finished, uh, uh, from watching the first bit when I went live, if you remember when I put the cardstock on, there was a bit of a gap between the cardstock and the top of the cup. Um, after I'd epoxied it, I didn't really like how it looked like it. You could tell that there was a gap there. So I did, if I can hold it up to the camera, I did go and put, um, I just lined painter's tape up and then I did exactly the same as we've done down the bottom. I put tacket on um, and then applied uh, the Aussie gold from Kiss My Art by Anna to the top just so that it was a little bit more finished off. So that I did try to record, um, but when it was finished, I realized that I didn't actually hit record like I thought I had. Um, so I have nothing to show you there, <laughs> but I did do that. It was just painter's tape and tacket method. Um, I did two coats of that. I also went through and put another coat um, of Aussie gold on the bottom before I put the first coat of epoxy on. I did a second coat here and then I've done two coats of that after epoxy. You can still see a tiny little bit of the leaf from the pattern underneath. I'll see if I can get that to show up on camera. See that tiny little bit just here? You can still see the leaf, but I'm not super worried about that because unless you point it out, you can't really see it. So that is our cup. Um, it's got the cardstock and everything that you saw in the uh, live portion, which is at the beginning of the video. Then it had a, a second coat of this, which was Tacket again and mica powders. Um, then I put the first coat of epoxy on. This back bit, because it was chunky, it did need it sanding back just a little bit, but not much. Uh, so I sanded that. I put my strip across the top, and then it's had another coat of epoxy on on top of that. Okay, so now we are up to putting the vinyl on. Now I just want to point out when I went live, I told you guys to please make sure that you seal your cardstock really, really well so that you don't get what we call wet spots or oil slicks. Now I did have that happen. Um, it is in a spot where we can cover it up with the stripes when we do the split part. Uh, so thankfully we, we can hide it. But I was going, I'm not going to go stripping it and starting from scratch and pretending like I'm perfect because this is how we learn and it makes for a great example. So if I hold, how are we going to, I'm going to put it this way. Right, if I hold it up, see the dark line that runs across here in patches, right? That is what we're talking about when we say wet spots or oil slicks is where I haven't, I haven't sealed correctly. Um, across the edge, right? So when I put my first coat of epoxy on, the epoxy's actually gotten up and underneath, although the cardstock itself, because you can see it's everywhere else, it's flawless, right? The cardstock itself was well sealed, but I haven't done my edge properly. So the epoxy has gone up and underneath my cardstock and created this wet line. We also have a little bit, oh, I'm great with my camera angles today, aren't I? A little bit just here, okay? Um, now thankfully we can cover that with vinyl so nobody's going to see that but that is what we're talking about okay now because of this originally I was just going to do a white stripe with a gold stripe over the top because uh, especially along this bit it does come in a fair way I'm actually going to do three layers and we're going to go gold white gold like you would on a damask tumbler if you've ever seen them they're the split cups but they go three ways this way instead of right so we're gonna we're gonna work with it now i have already done up one stripe that goes this way and the stripe that goes this way but so i've only got one to show you but the dimensions that i used remembering that i work in inches and not centimeters so if you work in centimeters you are going to have to convert it on google yourself 
the first strip, so the strip that sits on the actual cup itself, I did at 0.4 of an inch. The middle strip was 0.25 and the top strip, the skinniest strip, was 0.15 of an inch. So I will put all of that in the description. Oh, actually, I won't put it in the description. I'll just have a little note that comes up when I edit this video. It goes 0.4, then 0.25, then 0.15. Um, I did try it. I don't usually do three layers. I usually only do two. Um, I did try at going 0.5, like half an inch. And then the 0.25 so it was all half of um, the widths but the 0.5 of an inch was too thick and it looked real funny so I'm gonna put that aside for just a second this is well this is what we're going with I'm gonna try and get this in a way where it doesn't reflect off my window this is the champagne gold from the satin range from the tech wrap box that I did a video on last week we are using her champagne gold in the satin for this project so as you can see I've already done up this is my short line here this is one of my longer lines and then we're gonna make this one up here now the whole way around from top across the bottom and around again is 18 inches and then from here to there was four and a half inches so I have done up um, two lengths of 10 inches and then this was I uh, can't remember if I did four and a half or five but I made this one so it was only just hanging over for when we cut it and then two at 10. Now that's obviously going to give me um, a little bit of excess that we're going to have to trim off. Um, if I had the vinyl for it I would have cut the whole 20 inches into one big long strip um, but I only had a 6 by 12 inch sample cut of this gold and I really wanted to use this gold on this cup so we're compromising but it's also a really good way to learn for beginners especially how to um, match up your lining because you just wrap from top to base and then you have the join on the base where nobody really pays attention to anyway okay we've also cut the name that's going down here as I mentioned in the live this is for my best friend so I have done that that is the champagne gold on a white offset okay Ta -da! so first thing that we're going to oh, I'm going to show you how to construct your lines And then we'll apply them so we're going gold then white then gold okay so and because I'm left-handed I do have to do it this way so sorry guys I'm just gonna peel and if you're wondering why I have a strip and not like this um, I tried to cut them at the same time and it was the right cut settings for this kind of vinyl but it was too deep for this kind of vinyl so when I lifted the piece of vinyl off my cutting mat um, I left everything that I'd cut behind <laughs> so this is what we're working with but what you want to do and I'll try and do this in a way where you guys can see I know that that window is really glary I'm sorry okay so I line up one end try and get it by eye in the middle and press that down okay so now that's not going anywhere move this up so you can see in frame by eye I'm gonna line it up and then I'm gonna place it I've stretched that hang on try again I'm really fussy with my lines guys <laughs> so if it takes me a couple of goes it's because I'm a bit of a perfectionist I don't like unstraight lines especially on tumblers I think I mentioned that in the first part as well they just make me tick okay so it's only just this little bit down the end that wants to keep kicking off to the side it's like when I go bowling I need the bumpers on okay so we have our white and it's perfectly 
in line with the gold outlay and then we're going to get our gold piece which is on here and do exactly the same again so I'm going to line up at the top make sure it's in the middle of that white so that the two lines of white look the same width okay gonna come down three lines uh, our three strips okay so get it in frame we're gonna peel off oh no we're not we're gonna do this little bit first because then we can cut and have the outside strips run straight over the top so you can't see the joints And I want the middle of this center gold strip to line up with where my line is between the two sections. Okay. That's gonna come. it hangs over here and here I'm going to get my craft knife and I'm going to line up where this line comes down between these two sections and I'm just going to press my knife into make sure it's tight slice and this bit should just come up there we go okay so now that's not going to be hanging over when we go to put this glare man hang on one second i'm just gonna it's gonna get rid of that window glare nope it's not the window glare it's the light above me oh well we'll make do <laughs> um it's not gonna hang over when we come along and put our stripe over the top same deal with this side I'm gonna press the whole blade down into the line where I want to cut and then drag it okay and that's how I get straight cuts with the craft knife because I'm not very good at cutting straight lines as you guys saw when we were doing the cardstock okay so one of our longer strips starting at the top and same deal I want to make sure that the middle of my smallest gold strip sits in the middle of that join wraps around the bottom this is the one that we made when we laid it down see how the two top layers because you do stretch a little bit when you're trying to lay it down they do what they do hang over I'm just gonna quickly cut them 
so that they're the same length as that bottom gold line. There we go. Gonna line my middle strip up with my join line. Come down to the bottom. Nope, that's not straight. Okay. Sorry guys, my um, computer did an update last night and for some reason every time that Windows updates it sets the battery settings back to where if the screen's not active for a certain amount of time it goes to sleep and when it goes to sleep the camera just freezes okay but <laughs> you didn't miss much I've just put that down it now lines up on the bottom so I'm just gonna quickly make sure we have a little bit of a bump here Now, you can see where the join is. It's on the bottom of the cup. Once it gets epoxied over, unless you're looking for it, it's just going to be another part of the cup. Okay, which is why, especially when you're when you're first starting out or you're first starting to like split cups, trying to get a straight line the whole way around um, the length of the cup in your first go. Can throw you off a little bit so I do suggest splitting the um, dimensions into two and doing it in two pieces and have the join at the bottom okay but that is now our cup is all split up and all that there is left to do I'm just gonna move my camera that way because the angles are really throwing me off today for some reason okay um yes i want it to read from top to bottom okay you can see i did the same when i cut the name right which is why we've got this gap in the e um it cut too deep for the white so i just have to find A spot that's not too okay. I'm actually lifting off so that I'm leaving the backing paper behind because it was cut too deep. So I'm just going to use my little craft knife to pick that backing paper up, and hopefully, by theory, the rest will now come with it. There we go. working my cup from top to bottom you can see the bottom of the screen is the top of the cup okay now before I push that down anymore I just want to make sure that it's not leaning too much to one side ready for her final coat of epoxy um, 
almost. So I will put all of the links in the description for the vinyl that I used in this part, but it is the Champagne Gold in the Satin Range from Tech Wrap, um, and then the white's just M7 Gloss. Okay, so we'll be back to do the final coat. Final coat, yay, we made it. Okay, so it's been a bit of a ride, but we made it. So, final coat, the vinyl's on, um, it's been sitting for a couple of hours now, um, I don't like, if I can help it, um, I don't like putting epoxy straight over fresh vinyl, um, it has led to problems for me in the past where the vinyl lifts up a little bit, um, or the epoxy doesn't sit over the vinyl properly so you end up with fish eyes or right, whatever. So this has been sitting for a couple of hours. It's also been sprayed and wiped down, uh, sprayed with alcohol and wiped down with a little bit of paper towel. So it's nice and fresh and clean. I'm going to turn this on. And I do realise that it is rotating backwards, like the name's backwards for you guys. I do apologise. <clears throat> um, as uh, most recently, I am still using Diamond Coat from Just Resin. I have pre -made. Hang on, I'm just going to stop this because I just saw... I need my little, here it is, just seeing just on this corner here that the vinyl's popped, so excuse me, while I push him back into place, I'm just going to make sure that the other side's adhered as well, okay, continue. Uh, I am using Diamond Coat from Just Resin. Um, it is a one-to-one -one ratio resin, and I have mixed up 15 mil. Um, because this is all nice and smooth now, basically all we're doing is sealing the vinyl in and giving it a nice final coat. So it doesn't need to be super, super thick, but it does need to be thicker. What's going on here? It does need to be a little bit thicker because it is, well, what we hope will be the final coat. Okay, as always, glove up, mask up, wear eye goggles if you can. And we will put this final coat on and then I will add a little video to the end of what this looks like out in the sunshine because this galaxy star from DJ Designs, the glitter that we used, is absolutely stunning outside. I'm not a gold person, but this is definitely one of my favorite golds now. Okay, so we have full coverage. I'm gonna go right the way around and push up to the um, limb of the cup. just to make sure that that's fully covered as well. Okay, I'm just going to put the rest on. We'll hit it with a little bit of heat and then we'll keep it turning and then I'll go and take a video for you and hook that onto the end before the outro. It's gonna smooth it out a little bit, but because it's on the turner and it is a self-leveling resin, it will all even itself out as it turns. especially around where the vinyl is that it's fully covered okay 
So I will hit that with a little bit of heat now, um, just to pop any of the little micro bubbles that may be in there. Although I did have my resin sitting for a little while, so there shouldn't be too many bubbles except for that one right there. Um, hit it with heat, let it spin, and then hopefully it will be ready to send to my best friend. This is my split cup uh, tumbler with cardstock, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please let me know what you think in the comments, and I will see you next time. Bye!